Hey guys, this is Matt from Nod Studios here, and welcome back. Today we're going to be starting up a new Hearts of Iron 4 series, this time around as Yugoslavia. We will be using the Modern Day Millennium mod, and if you guys are interested in this mod, you like what you're seeing in the playthrough with all the modern day feel, all the great modern countries like the United States, France, well, they're all, okay. That was not a great example. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is if you like this mod, you like what you're seeing, go ahead, check out the description below. I will be including a link to the Steam Workshop page if you guys do want to check out the mod. But without further ado, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into things as Yugoslavia. Ah yes, and here we have the prompt that shows up every time we play the game with the Millennium Dawn mod installed. Millennium Dawn utilizes a party support system through National Spirits that allows you to keep track of what your citizens think of their political parties right now. Blah -de -de blah -de -de blah Yeah, we get it. We've been through this before. Now, starting off here, we have a lot of conservative and socialist influence. We also have a bit of nationalism and communism. However, I was, you know, trying to go for sort of a communist takeover or a communist reclaim of Yugoslavia, but since we have such a socialist influence, honestly, we could just stay socialist and go that route. That wouldn't be half bad. Let's go ahead, start that. We can begin the game off by selecting our initial research. We're going to go with the red dot site there, and then we'll switch it over to the industry tab and go with modern construction tools. Let's see, what else do we want to grab? We could work on our uh, land doctrine. That would be very helpful. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go for the ma uh, mass assault doctrine. Perfect weapons are overrated. A large number of good enough weapons is the pathway to victory. We're going to go with that. Mass assault. Perfect. Bada bang. Bada boom. Let's go ahead, set up our civilian factories to do some work. Um, What do we want to do here? How does the infrastructure look? Ooh, it's pretty poopy, especially down south. Hmm. All right, well, let's build a few more... Actually, we'll build one road there. And then we'll place a civilian factory in Montenegro. We'll do two. Then a military factory in Serbia. And whatever province that is, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. That is a terrible name to try and pronounce it's not gonna happen not gonna happen we'll go with the AKM factories the support equipment just the use you know some convoys get those out there oh boy oh boy okay well that is not good at all maybe we should do some factories because I cannot be importing three materials right off the bat that's gonna take up literally all of my freaking factories here, let's go back into construction. Let's get rid of all those orders that we just made. And do a factory, honestly. I mean, it's going to take a really long amount of time. A little bit longer than a civilian factory. It's really going to help out, though. Trust me, it really will. I'm thinking we should go for steel, because a lot of things use steel. So it's overall just a very beneficial thing to have. So let's just place that down in Morava. That should work out perfectly. And then we could just trade for the aluminum with China and the oil. Oh, <laughs> look who it is, the United States. We're trading oil with the United States. Who would have thought? <sighs> We're going with the industrial focus here. No national focus prerequisites. We need to strengthen our country's industrial base. It's going to give us a huge, nice industrial research bonus. No divisions are in basic training. Oh, that's not good. We don't have an infantry division made? What the heck is this, dude? What am I looking at right now? We got a mechanized brigade and an armored brigade, and that's it. Dude, come on. Seriously? That's what you're going to give me to work with? Well, we don't have any army experience, so we can't design any new battalions, or divisions, rather. All right, well, let's get out of that. We can't really do anything with that right now. I mean, I guess we could start a mechanized brigade to train, but... Then we would have to have a mechanized factory, and we don't have that. Yeah, let's see. They would just need infantry equipment, motorized, and mechanized. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> we'll leave that as it is right now. And yes, we have undesigned divisions. Or, divisions. Jeez, if I could talk. Undesigned divisions. 
And there we go. That was a little bit better. Let's give these guys a general. Who do we want to go with? Out of supply. Ooh. Wow. Skilled in amphibious operations, air assaults, and cold weather conditions. Ooh. The commando man is a man of many talents. Hmm. Okay, so I'm liking either the hill fighter or the commando. Both of those are really good traits to have. I'm thinking I'm going to go with the uh, Hill Fighter, though, just because it gives us a bunch of boosts with attacking. I mean, we don't have to really worry too much about our supply limit because we're going to be staying in the Balkans area for right now. So I'm not really going to worry about that too much. Maybe if we were going to, you know, expand overseas and do a foreign expedition, then we would want to try and select that general. But for right now, I'm just going to go with this guy. Not going to pronounce that name either. We're just going to assign him and call it a day. We could also create a front line. Hmm. Who do we want to go for first? Let's see. We need to open up the uh, faction map mode. Where is that at? Right there. Okay. Wow. I'm surprised. I thought a lot more of these nations over here in the Balkan area would be a part of NATO. But I guess they're not. Hmm. That's very nice. That gives us a lot of options, then, as to where we want to expand. I think I'm going to start small. We could go for Albania, but Macedonia is a little bit smaller. So, I think I'm going to go for them first. Oh, we need some political power. We haven't even started the game. Well, let's go ahead and do that, because that's probably a good idea, right? We got some new Security Council members here on the UN. The United Nations has elected five new members into its ranks, while five current members have finished their two years and will leave the Security Council. Okay, good, good. Not too much that, you know, I really care about because we're not a part of NATO or... Actually, are we a part of the UN? I don't even know if we're a part of the UN. I think Yugoslavia is. Oh boy, we got a big event right off the bat here. Parliamentary crisis. Initially, the great parliamentary crisis our news outlets now talk about broke out over a minor loophole in the tax code that affected our budget in a pretty insignificant way. <laughs> this has now grown into a tirade of insults from one side to the other and has affected our national prestige and our democratic legacy at home and abroad. Oh, geez. Well, that's not good. Let's see. We could have the Supreme Court intervene. That would give us a, a boost to our base ability. However, that would lose some political power. And also, Parliamentary Crisis would go on for 20 days. So, we would just lose a little bit of uh, political power. Not too big of a deal. Or we could lose stability, but gain a little bit of nationalist and communist popularity. And I'm not really trying to go for that. I think the stability is going to benefit us more. So, we're going to go with that. World news. Egypt takes control of the Halayib Triangle. The Egyptian government has informed the global community that its forces have successfully occupied the contested Halayib Triangle, over which Egypt has a long-standing dispute with its southern neighbor, Sudan. The Sudanese military has today admitted that a retreat was ordered, while the Sudanese government confirmed that it would not be dropping claims on the regions, which it viewed as rightfully Sudanese. One of the world's oldest border conflicts continues. World news, America chooses the status quo. Several discussions had grown public in the past few weeks throughout the United States of America. These discussions mainly targeted the current political system and the political process of elections, demanding a reformed or even dismantled system. Now, the answer of the American government seems quite clear. Nothing will change. The Democrats and Republicans will continue being in power and in conflict with one another. Bill Clinton has called the system satisfying when asked about it by a journalist. Oh yeah, that sure is the American system. Vote for the Democrats and Republicans and stay in prison forever. Wow, Russia also went to war. All diplomats of Russia have failed. They will now sort out their differences with their enemy on the battlefield. What? Oh, it's just Chechnya. Okay, the Chechnyan Rebellion. Yeah, nothing too big to worry about there. I thought they were going to have like a huge war with like the Ukraine or some other huge country. I don't know. Nope, just the Chechnyans. Chechnya has capitulated. Chechnya has lost the war and has surrendered. There seems to be no way their military is able to continue the fight. Well, that was a little expected. 
Oh god, okay, we have a very important event here. The devil himself has been elected president, Vladimir Putin. Dude, just look at him. You can see the freaking horns coming out of his face. He's letting up a doobie. He's going crazy. I mean, this dude is the devil incarnate himself. As was completely predictable, the young political upstart Vladimir Putin, acting as president since December 31st, 1999, has been confirmed in his office as president of Russia by the popular vote. Putin was internationally perceived as little more than a puppet who got to power simply because he was Boris Yeltsin's designated political successor. But, his recent unforgiving policy on the Chechen insurgency has already proved him to be a more resolute leader than some of his skeptics may expect. Red Dot Site 1 is finished. Let's go ahead and select a new technology. Yeah, we're not going to go for the holographic site. That's a little bit too far ahead of our time. I think I'm going to go with the modern support weapons. That's very helpful. Infrastructure has completed, so let's move on to Civilian Industry 1. Also, since we have 54 political power, I'm going to go ahead and right-click on Macedonia, and we can begin justifying our war goal against them. It's only going to cost 49 political power, and it'll take about 245 days to complete. So let's go ahead and send that over. Israeli forces retreat from southern Lebanon. Israel has had a partial military presence in southern Lebanon ever since they supported Christian militias in the Lebanese Civil War in 1982. The Israeli military staff has today confirmed that Israel has completed the retreat from the territory since occupied by them. Lebanese officials have made statements of approval. The Algiers Agreement, Eritrea and Ethiopia were at war since 1998, when border disputes between the two countries exploded into military conflict. The war was long, bloody, and pointless, with more than 300,000 Ethiopian soldiers meeting more than 150,000 Eritrean forces on the field of battle. Both countries might have suffered as many as 170,000 dead. Ethiopia, generally speaking, achieved military victory, maintaining control over all disputed areas. Eritrea, however, received international support through court arbitration, receiving about 40% of the disputed regions in the subsequent presentation of the conflict to the Permanent Court of Arbitration. The ceasefire was signed in the midst of June of 2000, and the Algiers Peace Agreement is to be finalized on December 12th. Syria insults Israel over the Golan Deal after the Israeli government had approached the government of Syria over a possible return of the Golan Heights to the Syrian administration, the Syrian government publicly declared that there would be no surrender in front of Israeli Zionists and their evil schemes. Syria will rather abstain from gaining control over Golan than to recognize the Jewish parasite as a state. Modern Construction Tools 2 has completed, so let's go ahead, open up the research menu, and let's see, what do we want to move on to next? I'm thinking modern CIM software is probably the best way to go since we're getting such a huge boost on the research. So while we're preparing this war justification against Macedonia, what I want to go ahead and do is set up the army to just go ahead and form an offensive front line against Macedonia. So we're going to set up that front line and just set up an order for the offensive line to push through until the edge of the country, meaning the border of Greece. Unfortunately, we don't have the right to send any military troops into Cassava, which is very disappointing. So hopefully what will end up happening is we'll just swoop in through this right side and we'll be able to break through. I mean, Macedonia isn't too powerful, so I'm not super worried. I'm also just going to go ahead and set this army up to train. I know they're already regulars, but I'm just going to go ahead and set them up to do it anyways, because it should prepare them a little bit more for the battle. The Kursk submarine disaster, the officials of the Russian Federation have recently reported that the Russian Navy submarine K-141, designated named Kursk, has sunk in the Barents Sea 75 kilometers from the shoreline of the Kola Peninsula on August 12th of 2000 at roughly 11.30 a.m. The Russian Navy has publicly offered several explanations, including a collision or an attack by a NATO submarine. The NATO General Secretary has already denied these allegations. The death toll stands at 118. Wow! Which equals the entire crew of K-141. Dang, dude, that is a huge crew. 118 dudes for one ship? Whoo! Well, I hope the Russians will be fine. 2000 Sydney Olympics, the 27th Olympic Summer Games of the modern era, were held in Sydney, Australia, from September 15th until October 1st of 2000. 199 nations competed, with the United States and Russia winning the majority of medals. Hosting Australia came in fourth. 
The Games met global acclaim, with British journalist James Mossop remarking that any future Olympic Games would have to hold up to the standards set in Sydney. Very well, the Games are concluded. Awesome to see that the Olympics went well and everyone competed very fairly. Now I know we don't have all of the factories nor the resources required to go ahead and do this right now, but what I'm going to do is set up a factory, not for tanks, but for mechanized infantry. We're going to do light mechanized, and then we'll also do a one of uh, motorized. There we go, and that'll help reinforce our troops, make everything go smoothly, and ensure that we win the war with Macedonia. The mass assault doctrine has completed, so let's go ahead and open up the research tab. Ooh, our other research completed too, nice. I'm just gonna move down the line with the mass assault doctrine. And then for this one, let's see, what infantry research can we get so far? Hmm. We could go for the ceramic body armor, that's pretty good. Or the uniform, eh, that's a little bit ahead of our time. Yeah, let's go with the body armor. That's going to be very useful. And since we have 150 political power, we can go ahead and make a change to our government, which I think I am going to do. Mm, I don't want to change our immigration policy. Instead, let's see. Can we get a communist sympathizer into our government? Let's see. Yes, there he is. Communist revolutionary. <laughs> Let the revolution begin. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And since we're a socialist government, we actually have elections. So, yeah, we'll have an election, actually, this year, in December. Oh, no. Okay, I, I really hope that the conservatives don't win. Oh, no, they're going to win, aren't they? They have 38% of the popularity, and the socialists only have 32. Oh, no, that's going to soil my plans, dude. They better still let me declare war on Macedonia. If they don't, ooh, we're going to have a problem. Oh, our national focus completed. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, work on industrial development. USS Coal bombing. The United States Naval Command has reported that the destroyer USS Coal was attacked by the Al-Qaeda network, killing 17 American servicemen. American intelligence reports point to the government of Sudan as a possible supporter of the two attackers. Modern CIM software has completed and been officially researched. So I don't think I'm going to do any much more with the industrial tab here, just because really a lot of it is ahead of our time, and I don't want to get involved in that because honestly, it's a waste of our time if we do get involved in it because it takes way longer to research. We get a penalty for researching things in the future. So I'm going to try and, you know, stay away from that as much as possible. We could try and go for like some naval research. Ooh, we should probably do this. Cold War ship design. By learning the mistakes of shipbuilding during the Cold Wars, we should be able to think of new ship types for the future. So it'll give us um, less requirements for the troop convoys, and it'll also give us a little bit of naval invasion capacity, so that's nice. United States presidential election. George W. Bush, candidate of the Republican Party, has won the presidential election of the United States. Oh, wondrous. Yes, glorious. Oh, yeah. Look at that, guys. Our steel factory is almost completed. It's 98% completed. Ooh, communist rally. Hey, this movement deserves support. Let's do it, man. More communist influence? I will take it. Where, where does that put us? Aw, oh, only two communist influence. That's all right. It'll get up there later on in the game. Don't you worry. Cold War ship design has completed, so let's move on there. I think I'm just going to go with the uh, Cold War transport ships there. Now that that task is completed, we also have two civilian factories to go ahead and use on any construction jobs that we need. Let's see here. It appears that we have a little bit of a deficit in rubber, so let's see. Can we do a rubber factory? We'll do it in Cassavo. And how long is that going to take? Just as long as the steel factory. Okay. Well, it's going to be very useful, so I don't mind putting the factories to use making it. Ooh, hello. Election time. It's January 1st, 2001. Public elections are being held, and the votes will be soon counted. All major parties are looking at one another to form up or antagonize in government. Who could possibly win? 
Developer notes, the ruling party can defend its title if it has 20% popular support. Another party can take over if they have 30% or more popular support. Should all parties have below 20%, the ruling party will also win. So it looks like we can either have the uh, ruling party, which is the socialists, win, or we could have the conservatives win, and the SNS will become the ruling party. I don't want that to happen because being conservative really limits our options of war. So I'm going to stay socialist and let the ruling party win. Sweet. Yeah, that is awesome, dude. That is awesome. And the communists, they are coming up, dude. 20% popularity already. Woo. I'll take it, man. All right. So we've managed to accumulate another 150 political power. So I'm just going to choose another political advisor for our country. And I was thinking, where's the dude? Where is he? Right here. Milajko Merrick. Milajko Merrick? Uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna go with this dude because he gives us a bonus to our stability. And if you take a look at the stability, ew, ew. Yeah, no, that's not good. It's at 45%, so it's a little low for my liking. I'm gonna go with Milajko Merrick. Let's do it. Oh man, again, another parliamentary crisis. You gotta be joking me, dude. I think I'm just going to go with the same exact option, have the Supreme Court intervene. It'll give us a little bit of stability. We'll take a hit with our political power, but honestly, there's no better option, so I'm just going to go with that. Ooh, in other news, though, our justification for conquering Macedonia has finished. So let's go ahead and declare war on them, man. Let's get it rolling, dude. Yeah, that's it. All right. Oh, no. The plan is to be considered a disadvantage. Why? Oh, maybe it's because that uh, military zone we had over there. That demilitarized zone. Well, now it's gone. Wait, so does that mean it's gone forever? I mean, <laughs> I don't mind if it's gone forever. It could stay gone forever. <laughs> I mean, I, I would enjoy that. Let's see. So we have our air wings here. I'm going to assign them to go over into Macedonia and just start causing a whole bunch of ruckus. We'll do air superiority and um, interceptions. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Let's get those guys into Macedonia, too. They could do some close air support. Give our boys some support. Oh, what was that? Cold War transport ships. Okay. Um, hmm, what do we want to do? We could start with some Corvettes. Why don't we just do that? Ooh, and ceramic body armor has completed too. Hmm, where do we want to focus this research then? We could just go for improved anti-tank weapons. That would really help out. It's a little bit ahead of our time, so we are going to take a bit of a penalty with it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're going to take a penalty with a lot of this stuff. We're kind of just ahead of the game, you know? It's very nice. I do enjoy it. Um, we could go for some artillery upgrades. Yeah, you know, what the heck? Let's do it, dude. Let's get some improved artillery, too. Or do we want to go with some anti-tank stuff? Actually, let's get some towed anti-tank weapons. Yeah, that'll work out good. Sweet. All right, and can we initiate our battle plan? Yes, we can. It appears to be to our advantage, too. Oh, yeah, look at that. I don't know if it actually is, though. Sometimes they lie to you like that. I mean, look at that, because we're not really winning right now. It's kind of at a stalemate. Ooh, Switzerland joins the UN. What? Originally, the Swiss government had refused to join the United Nations after the end of the Second World War, pointing to the country's continued dedication to its own neutrality, which is especially weird considering the UN's main seat in Europe is the UNAG, the United Nations office in Geneva. Ooh, Illuminati stuff going on. Now, after a public referendum on the matter, the Swiss government has announced that the country would move forward to abandon its post as a spectator and would join the organization as a full member. It's about dang time, Switzerland. Good on you. Good on you. I really honestly don't care, though. I'm, I'm not, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Let's go with Civilian Industry 3 here for our national focus. 
All right, so since we're in a deficit with rubber right now, I'm just gonna trade with Thailand because it is really hurting our factories and we need some mechanized infantry to be pumped out like crazy because we're in this war. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. I know our rubber factory is being worked on, but I just did not wanna wait. Oh, wow, okay, the war's over. Never mind, we can rescind that trade order then. We don't need it. Let's take all their territory, end the turn, and voila. <laughs> Take that, Macedonia. Oh, yes, we are a big, powerful glob of jelly now. You're coming next, Albania. Hmm. Oh, wait. I don't have enough political power. You're not coming just yet, but don't you worry. When I get 30 more political power, it's gonna be you. I'm gonna set up the army on a front line against Albania, and we'll do our offensive line to the edge of their country. Albania should be another easy country to just steamroll right over, so I'm not really too worried about them. Debate regarding direct democracy. Others have used the world's first nuclear weapon, placing them firmly in the lead of the current arms race. Despite our best efforts, we are left with no defense and no means of retaliation. Utterly outmatched, we have no choice but to redouble our efforts and bridge the gap before they can unleash much more of this devastation. Okay, I don't know what that has to do with direct democracy. A certainly valid proposal. Mm, that would make the communists a little less liked, but the, the stability. You know, I'm actually going to go for that. Even though we are going to take a popularity hit in the communist area, which we don't want right now, and also a political power hit, that stability is really going to help us out. I'm trying to get that up as far as possible because as it stands right now, it's pretty dang low. Civilian Industry 3 has completed, so let's move on to... I was thinking of doing Civilian Industry 4, but since we're going to war with Albania very soon, I think I'm just going to do Military Industry, because it'll give us an additional building slot and also um, a military factory. Nice, we finished researching the first tier of Corvettes. I'm going to move on to Destroyers. We'll get the first tier of those, and it looks like we're going to need a new research thingy-maboob for that slot. Hmm, what do we want to do here? We could get an anti-tank upgrade. What about infantry? Hmm. Hmm. I think, honestly, we might just go with improved anti-tank weapons. Yeah, let's just go with that. Now we have the 50 political power required to justify our war goal against Albania here. So we're going to go ahead and do a justification for conquering Albania. Boom. Send that over. It's going to take the same amount of time that it took to do the same to Macedonia. 245 days. We'll be finished up at the end of January 2002. So we have a little bit of time to wait. And I think I'm just actually going to end this episode off here. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this one, you want to see some more Hearts of Iron 4 as Yugoslavia, please leave a like, please comment, and please, please, please subscribe. It really helps out, guys, and it really does mean a lot. So once again, thank you all so, so much, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.